Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hope you all, all have been doing well. So today I have an interesting topic, at least I think, to share with you all. How digital identities and SSIs are changing the entire security scenario and what we can expect from data security and privacy in the coming time. So we'll first discuss simpler and straightforward concepts and gradually get into more sophisticated ones. So let us get into it. But for those of you that are more experienced and familiar, you can jump through the chapters. So first, what is identity? And before diving into digital identity, we must first establish the true meaning of identity in data security and the digital age. As you all might know, by definition, identity represents a personal total aggregating the mixture of their appearance, characteristics, beliefs, qualities, and origin. Don't get it yet? Hmm. So let's us simplify it. To put it simple, your identity is what distinguishes you from everyone else in the entire world. And how does it do so? By taking into account each little thing that makes you, you. So your first identity is who you are. Identity can refer to many different things or a single aspect that other people can use to identify you. For example, people use your name as an identity to call you. People explain someone's physical appearance to identify other people they have seen. Generally, your name, your parents' name, address, and date of birth are attributes used as your identity. So what is digital identity? And in the physical world, you can easily prove your identity by exhibiting your presence using a government issue identity card, driver license, proof of address, or anything that might help the other party, such as hotel, a person, an organization, or anything else to verify who you are. But in the digital world, such identification holds little significance, which is where digital identities come in. And a digital identity is a collection of unique identifiers, IP addresses, behavioral patterns, or biometric that might help any online service, such as other individuals, websites, organizations, or devices, to verify that you are the one you claim to be. To understand it, you should know that your digital identity uses two things. First, digital attributes are personally identifiable information, what we call PII, that people can gather from public or private records of organizations or services. The second is digital activities that represent your online behavioral patterns, such as your uh, queries, search history, commonly visited websites and location, cell phone usage, and more. Some examples of digital identities most commonly used worldwide include purchasing history or behavior, username and password, online search activities, electronic transactions, and digital identities is your online experience and have a variety of use cases such as uh, instant car checkouts on e-commerce website, instant sign up to new websites, for example, you can sign up on most websites this day by using your existing Google, Facebook, or Apple account. Digital identities are used for age and identity uh, verification in financial services, such as in uh, KYC or Know Your Customer uh, process. Let us now see what is a self sovereign identity. SSI. And if you have been keeping up with digital identities, chances are you might have encountered the term self sovereign identity. Don't worry, if you have not, this is why I'm here to explain. So self sovereign identity is an identity that a person entirely owns. This means that your self sovereign identity is owned by you 
and gives you complete control of it. But how do you get the control, right? And let me explain what is an example of an online service. Suppose you are signing up on a platform providing financial websites and they ask you to upload a government-issued identity card to prove your identity. They can take up to 15 days to check and approve your account as the identity is checked and approved by intermediaries or employees who match the information provided in your account with the details in your document. Most identity management models use intermediaries to check if people are whom they claim to be. Using your Google account to log in to another website also involves a third party application or service that is Google as an intermediary. However, self-sovereign identities take those intermediaries out. Self-sovereign identities are established between just three parties for maximum security. And these are the identity issuing authority, the identity owner, which is, is you, and the identity verifier. And you can store your self-sovereign identity in a personal digital identity wallet and have full control over the people you share your SSI with and what part of attributes of your identity they get to see. For example, you can only disclose your photograph and name to one party or reveal your name and date of birth to another party, hiding your photograph. But how do SSI grant you control and privacy? As giving control back to you, digital identities come with various problems and challenges, such as cumbersome registrations and management of multiple login credential for different services and website, little control over sharing of personal data, variable availability of individual or parties to verify your credential, and various databases storing your personal information are open to exploitation, data theft, and more. However, self-sovereign identities provide control of your personal information back to you. And the SSI gives the freedom of sharing your personal information with others on the internet. With SSIs, you can share your identity safely as you can control the access to your information over the internet. Each time you use your SSI to verify yourself online, you are using your digital wallet to share your identity minimizing security risk as it eliminates the need to store or upload your personal information on various websites or service databases. SSIs grant you complete control of your digital identity, making you a self-sovereign individual. Now we will discuss self-sovereign identity from the perspective of data security and privacy. So SSIs have been established as the best solution for data security and privacy as they hold the potential to transform the current scenario completely. In an age where traditional identity management does nothing for you and leaves you open to various data security and privacy risk, self-sovereign identities seems like an evolutionary steps for digital identification. SSIs can drastically limit the personal data you need to hold and it's scattering across various databases. SSIs align with data protection regulation and procedures by offering autonomy control and interoperability. There might be some overlooked components or questions, for example, whether or not SSIs are ready for population level usage and benefits organization will get mainstreaming SST as the primary model for digital identification. Some excellent use cases of self-sovereign identities includes simplifying and speeding up KYC applications, patient identity management in healthcare, faster identity approvals in financial services. So SSIs might catch on in months or take a few years to achieve worldwide adoption. 
they might even be succeeded by a better application providing better data security and privacy. But one thing is for certain. Currently, SSIs offer the best solution offering complete control to individuals to achieve adequate data security and privacy of personal information. Latest regulation and tech are paving the way for transformation into digital identities. The question remains, is the world ready to move on to self sovereign identities? There have been numerous electronic identification schemes that included both mobile and card-based schemes in the past few years in various nations such as Algeria, Belgium, Cameroon, Jordan, the Philippines, Italy, Japan, Senegal, Taiwan, Turkey, and the inclusion of biometrics for national identification. This exhibits how the government across the world are already in support of common and secure digital identification system. The world as a whole is also making strides towards regulation and new technologies to fasten the pace for the adoption and transformation into digital identities. Some of those include the ID4D initiative of the United Nations and the World Bank to provide legal identities to every individual on the planet by 2030, the concept of digital or mobile driver license in the US, UK, Australia, Netherlands, Denmark and South Korea, liveness recognition features are gaining pace in the security industry for advanced digital identity solutions, and enhance identity and access management. Digital identities are not slowing down. With the internet's usage growing at a tremendous rate, there will certainly be an accelerated shift and greater demand for data security and privacy. With national ID initiatives and newer implementation in the market, the most notable being the European Commission 2021 proposal for digital identity for all the EU citizens. We can expect to see SSIs and digital identities progress incredibly in the forthcoming future. Balance of digital data security and privacy. But what about the balance of digital data security and privacy? Can we have both at the same time or is it a thing where we cannot have one without the other. For a secure digital world, it is evident that online interactions requires us to establish trust. The counterpiece of this trust will be your digital identity and its advocate implementation, so your privacy is never at risk. The forefront of this balance is your consent and control over the individuals who can see your digital identity while people argue that decentralized digital identity solutions can provide many benefits, the protection of digital identities will be the government's responsibility, and only time will tell how the problem will be tackled in the digital identity and security of privacy model. For now, you should know that regardless of the origination of digital identities, be it decentralized, federated, or government-issued robust st standard will be needed to ensure the privacy of digital data to prevent current and additional cybersecurity risks that may arise to protect malicious actors from exploiting digital identity or misusing it. Making the Internet safer with digital identity and privacy. The internet will be safer if individuals' digital identities and privacy are protected. Digital identities surely pave the way for the next step towards data security and privacy by giving you the control of your identity and minimizing exposure, as I highlighted before. Furthermore, digital identities will bring new standards and norms for attribute collections, authorization and authentication. Digital identities will certainly privatize digital identity security and give rise to new security models 
or wider adoption or identity as a service. However, one thing is for certain, limiting the exposure of data, especially personal identification, will surely make the internet a lot safer. So this was it for today's video. Now you know all about digital identities and why digital identities can be excellent tools in our arsenal against cybercrime and misuse of digital data. Hope you guys learned something new from this video. Let me know if you have any doubts in the comments below. And I will be back soon with more interesting topic, covering similar topics to help you keep up the world's latest. Until then, take care and I will see you in the next one.